We've been uh, mentioning a variety of the kinds of experiments that International Space Station crew members perform, and those experiments uh, come in a wide range of their different scientific disciplines, some of it very deep and theoretical, uh, some of it designed to learn more about how people can live in the space environment. And some of it is demonstrating concepts for technology that could assist future exploration to deep space. And today, uh, Commander Kevin Ford performed one of those latter experiments. You're seeing some video that we uh, recorded that was uh, downlinked earlier today of Ford performing a European Space Agency investigation that's aimed at improving crew operations efficiency and uh, their autonomy as well. Uh, joining us this morning to talk more about CRUISE, which is Crew User Interface System Enhancement, is Michael Wolf, a senior software engineer and ESA's lead and co-investigator for the CRUISE experiment, speaking with us this morning from his office at the European Space Research and Technology Center in Nordwijk in the Netherlands. Uh, Michael, tell me about the background of this project and how you got involved in it. Okay, uh, good morning, Pat, first, and, and thanks for the chance to um, uh, chat with you about this. Uh, we, uh, our group here at ESA and our industrial colleagues, we've been interested in, in improving the onboard user interface for a long time, uh, essentially trying to make uh, astronauts' performance improve and also get uh, better, say, user satisfaction for when they're actually working up there. And the streams we've been doing this in is technology demonstrations, say building block demonstrations, but we've all also been thinking, uh, say more in larger term, of, of trying to establish a path towards building a, a smart assistant, say an e-partner, to actually give a, a more broader support. I'd say that what we did today, the, the commander session with crews, is a building block type of technology demonstration and also an operations demonstration. Well, maybe a way to help understand this is to, to turn that question on its head. What is the deficiency in the way the crews operate now? Uh, what, do you, what do you see in the current way that they operate that should be improved? Well, f first, I don't, I don't think it's only deficiencies. We do, we do have some advantages with the electronic systems on board. I mean, we, we can carry less paper, and thereby we get things a little bit uh, more cost-effective operations. But, but certainly uh, one deficiency is, of course, that it takes a long time to spin in technologies from, from ground into the space segment, since all validation and safety aspects has to be taken into account. And this is, this is what we're trying to do. And especially we've seen that for manual tasks, in-flight maintenance tasks type of things, uh, the user interface that is provided today for, for the astronauts is not so-called task transparent enough, which means the user interface often gets in the way uh, while they are doing their primary tasks, say um, adjusting a valve or, or, or doing a repair, uh, repair um, activity. Their, their ability to consult the instructions is hampering them from doing the actual work. That's correct. And we also seen uh, that um, the um, operation, the actual instructions uh, for avionics task, when you actually have to uh, tune something deep down in the system, you usually have the operations content, the procedures separated from the flight software displays. And one of our sub-experiments today is to, deter, uh, to um, go towards a design where we have both operations, instructions, and flight software parts in the same flow in the procedure, something that is not yet available on board. We've noticed that part of, of this procedure has to do with the use of, of voice activation, and there's a, a piece of hardware that we saw in the video where uh, that Kevin Ford was wearing, uh, a little headset microphone, which is not brand new technology. Are you just trying to make better use of what already exists? Or are you trying to develop something new? I, I, I would say, to a large extent, it is a spin-in uh, type of experiments. We're spinning in from, from the consumer market and, and what's available for us here down on ground. And indeed, a, a, as you noticed, um, it is, it's a, a fairly n a normal microphone and, and headset he's using there. So. But, but uh, a, a voice dialogue has not been available for crew before. 
There has been other experiments. Our NASA colleagues have indeed experimented with this. But moving from experiments towards actually no operational interfaces has not yet taken place. And we, we, we're trying to learn more about this so we can, based on this experiment, we can design systems that, are, uh, uh, that this will actually work on. And I noticed in, in some of the paperwork that one member of your science team is uh, Italian astronaut Paolo Nespoli, uh, an ESA astronaut, uh, has having his point of view, a veteran station crew member's point of view, uh, helped you in your, in your development? Um, for us, yes, it's always very important to, to have um, end users involved, as astronauts involved. And, and Paolo and also his other colleagues at European Astronaut Centers, for example, Frank de Vinne, has, has helped us uh, um, both in the development and in the testing. So uh, it's, it's not only for the final test, but we need all stakeholders, astronauts and operations engineers, to be involved throughout development and testing to get a product that we think can do the job that we expect it to do. So how did it go this morning? Uh, Kevin Ford was working with, uh, in, in two sessions on the, on the timeline here, with a procedural display and then with a voice-activated procedure viewer. Uh, tell us how today's work went. Um, and I, I could only follow it the same way you did, which was the voice loop and, and from video, and certainly the pay, uh, procedure display uh, looked to go uh, very, very fine. Uh, we were on time and we had uh, the whole task completed. We will be very interested in, in seeing the data generated. Uh, later on, uh, it was the voice-activated procedure viewer that we did, and that task was selected to be as realistic as possible. So this was an in-flight maintenance task, and, and with in-flight maintenance task comes also uh, say other issues. And, and I think uh, that was one issue with the tools here. And that means overall that there was some, uh, some time pressure, I believe, and a high workload on Kevin. And uh, in such a situation, and this is part of what we want to learn about also, it is, uh, it is excellent to be able to do one thing, to, to do user interaction in more than one way, so voice and point and click. But it's, of course, easy to do the, the most... Uh, a, the one that you're most used to first. So I believe we got, we got some good uh, voice commanding in there, but um, we have a mixture of both voice commanding and traditional commanding. So again, when we look at the data there, it, both the objective and the subjective data, it will be very interesting to see. And, and I believe that uh, Chris Hatfield is going to do a, a similar type of run for you uh, uh, later on, right? That's correct. So um, thereby we... We cannot say, of course, that we have a, a full statistical, uh, can do a full statistical analysis, but with two uh, um, astronauts uh, performing our experiment, we will have a, a much better idea than only the, the ground-based experiments that we've done before. That we are, hopefully, we get the kind of insight we need to design these systems. So what's the next step? After uh, Ford and Hadfield do this, uh, you've said you want to, you need to look at the data, but what will be the next step uh, for you and your team? Um, yeah, after analysis, I, I, I think we're heading towards more type of building block experiments. For example, having this so-called procedure viewer on, on a state-of-the-art um, tablet and also adapt its user interface to something that we're more used to on, on the ground. This is also in cooperation with our NASA colleagues and, and the procedure uh, group there. We are also looking at uh, uh, more wearable systems, so you should not have to be floating back and forth to your laptop for any reason, but you should be able to bring, bring your equipment with you to your, to your workplace, and we hope we can uh, test these things in the near future. And of course, with, with voice, which is one of the new natural user interfaces, we, we hope we can implement a full dialogue. This time we only had full voice dialogue. This time we only had voice commanding, but uh, the system itself was, in a sense, silent. It didn't really speak back. Let's see. Is, is that the goal, then, in, in the long run? Is Are you trying, once this is all developed and, and implemented, uh, is, are you trying to create a system where, like in science fiction, where people can talk to their computers and the computers talk back? Uh, or you could say it's a little 
you could have that science fiction picture of a friendly hell, but of course it's not only that you can talk, it's also what you're talking about. So it should, it should be robust and resilient um, uh, e-partner or crew assistant that, that can help the crew member, the astronauts and the astronaut team to work together and, and sh uh, share the tasks uh, properly and give appropriate support depending on, on the individual's needs. And that is, then we've gone beyond building blocks and actually build, build a system. And so, hopefully we have a, a chance to do some of testing for this kind of system to support more autonomous operations I, I, when ISS can be used as an analog for a an, um, uh, mission beyond low Earth orbit. That sounds great. And actually I was thinking more of a talking to the Star Trek computer rather than HAL, but it's the same, um, it's the yeah, same principle. So I, in principle, it should work that too. Michael, I appreciate your uh, taking the time to bring us up to speed on this. It's very interesting. Thank you. Thank you very much for Michael being Wolf. able to come on. Michael Wolf is a senior software engineer with the European Space Agency. He's the lead and co-investigator for the CRUISE experiment.